Hello, everyone. Welcome to iBug Today's iBug Cafe. Today is January 9th, 2022, and this is the 81st episode. Uh, my name is Sri. I am your host, and I am joined by a esteemed guest of Michael McCulloch, Sandhya Rao, as well as our presenters, Terry Ann Sorman, Brad Schneider, and Michael McCulloch. So today's topic we're gonna to talk about is the Zoom app on our iPhone. And before we start, we're gonna go over some of the housekeeping rules. Uh, please keep in mind that this cafe is being recorded for our podcast as well as our YouTube channel. So I'm gonna kindly ask that everyone stay muted until we open it up for questions and comments. And and uh, what we're going to do is cover on how to mute and unmute. Now, before I do that, just make sure that when we open it up for questions, that I kindly ask that you unmute and you state your name, and I will call upon you, and then you can make your comment or question. And during that time, I kindly ask that everyone else stay muted until the conversation comes to a complete end. So how do we mute and unmute our devices? So if you're on an iPhone, your mute button is located on the bottom left. If you're on an iPad, your mute button is located in the top middle. And if you're on a computer, on a Mac, it is Shift Command A. And if you're on a Windows PC, it is Alt A. And you can also use the space bar to unmute and release the space bar and you'll go back on mute if you're using a computer. And if you are on a landline, we will be using a star six to toggle between mute and unmute. As well as on the cafe, we don't use the race hand gesture. So uh, please don't uh, use that. All right, uh, before we go around and introduce ourselves, uh, I do want to talk about today's icebreaker question. I've got a little bit of a treat because I'm going to give a prize to the winner. And before I uh, make a comment about the, uh, the question, I just want to go over some of the rules. Okay. So, rule number one. And this icebreaker question is that uh, I'm going to ask you to tell me in the cafe last year how many total minutes that iBug today iCafe used on the Zoom app. And when you give me the answer, the person that gets it or gets it close to without going over is going to be the winner. And the winning price is going to be a $20 gift card to Uber, which you can use for Uber Ride or for Uber Eats. And you are going to need to be present to get the price. And I'm going to announce the winner after we finish all of our presentation. So the question, the, the icebreaker question is, what is the total number of minutes that iBug today used on the cafe in the year 2021. So I'm going to have Sandhya go ahead and unmute everyone. We're going to go ahead and introduce everyone. Uh, please let me know uh, your name, where you're calling from, as well as if you're a first time to the iBug Cafe, definitely let us know uh, how did you hear about us and tell me the total number of minutes that iBug Today Cafe used on the Zoom app in the year 2021. So Sandhya, I kindly ask go ahead and unmute and we'll go around the table. Yep, they should be ready to go. All right, this let's go ahead and make sure you guys introduce this your name and please tell us the number very clearly so we can keep a log of it. Thank you. This is Ted. Hey, go ahead, Ted. In uh, Ohio. Um, right, what's your number? 1,440 is the number I'll give. <clears throat> I'm sorry, can you say the number again? 1,440. Okay, thank you. In, uh, in Ohio. Dana, what's your number count? Um, 1,050. Okay, all right, who's next? This is Chanel. All right, Chanel, welcome. I was also going to say 1,440. Okay. All right, who's next? This is Eva in Houston. All right, Eva, welcome. Uh, let's see. 
I'm in Missouri City. Um, the number I would give is 5,700. All right. Thank you. All right. Who's this next? is Herbie. All right, Herbie, welcome. So the total minutes of Zoom for the cafe's last year is what you said? Yes. So I'm going to say 2,160. All right. Thank you. All give right. Who's this is Claudia Houston. Uh, I'm sorry, who's this? Claudia. Hi, Claudia. Um, calling from Houston. Uh, a number, I think it's uh, 2,150. 2,150, okay. All right, who's next? This is Michelle from Virginia, and I'm going to skip the question. All right, Michelle's going to skip. Okay, who's next? This is Dan. All right, Dan, what's your number? 2155, 2155. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, who's next? Kathy from Pennsylvania. Welcome. I don't know. I, I'm not going to guess. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Uh, who's next? This is Terry from Arlington Heights. All right, Terry, what's your guess? 1,320. Okay. This is Brad. I'm in Dallas. Right. Hey, Brad, welcome. Um, I'm going to say 2,500. 2,500. Okay. Sharon from New York, and I think it's 2,400. All right, 2,400. Okay. All right, who's next? This is Ned from Texas. 2,800. 2,800. All right, welcome, Ned. Okay, who's next? Donna from North Carolina. Welcome, Donna. What's your guess? And, all right. I'm going to say 2,350. Okay. All right. Uh, who's this, next? This is Helene. Hey, Helene. Welcome. Um, my number is 2,200. 2,200. Okay. All right. Who's next? Greg from Texas. Hey, Greg, welcome. What's your and number? I'll, I'll say 3,200. 3,200. Okay. All right. Who's next? Freddie. Hey, right. Texas. Welcome. 1,500. 1,500. Okay. This is Jim. Welcome, Jim. Uh, from North Carolina. Uh, 2,650. 2,650. Okay. All right. Who's next? Hi, Shree, this is Jody in New Hampshire, and I'm going to skip because we don't have Uber around here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, who's next? This is Linda from Umble. Um, 1447. 1447. Okay. Who's next? Michael in Houston. 199,560. <laughs> okay. I was going to tell you you weren't eligible, but that's okay. All right, who's next? <laughs> All right, anyone else got a good guess? It's for a $20 gift card to Uber. You can use it for Uber or Uber Eats. This is Sandhya. Hi, Sandhya. I know the Welcome. answer, so I won't guess. All right. Can Thank I you. tell him? Can I tell him? Uh, sure. Take a while, guess. <laughs> How did okay. you get the answer? Because I'm special. Okay, bye. Thank you, Shree. All, All right. right. Hey, uh, anyone else? Okay, if not, uh, before we start our presentation, I'm going to have uh, Sandhya tell us what amazing things are occurring at iBook today for the upcoming week. So, Sandhya? All right, let's see here. Got a little too many things going on here, but okay, let's go for it. What do we have coming up this month, this week? Uh, all right, uh, let's see. Hang on. Okay, we'll go ahead and start with uh, what's coming up this uh, this week. Uh, we have the iBug Buzz has moved to uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And so we're, we're moving up a half an hour. So that way we should be able to get lots more stuff done. So please come and that's on our Zoom conference call. 
Uh, we also have uh, we have the mini buzz on the clubhouse platform, and that'll be this Tuesday from five to six. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, okay, here we go. Now, this is much more helpful when you have your notes available. <laughs> um, let's see. We have our regular iBug Night at the Virtual Movies. That's always lots of fun, and that will be on next Friday, obviously. And then if you want to find out early for the big reveal, come on Monday night and uh, We've had some email issues, but those should all be resolved by next week. So don't worry, you should uh, get all the email notifications as we normally have. Uh, let's see, we have our book club next Thursday. We're watching, uh, listening to Commonwealth. And it's about, oh, I think it's 10 hours or a little more than 10 hours. So it's definitely encourage you to come for that. And that'll be Thursday at 6.30 on this Zoom platform. Uh, let's see what else, what else? Oh, oh, how could I forget? We have our iBug Apple workshop, our special Apple workshop, one of my favorites, and it's going to be show and tell edition. And well, I guess it'll be describe and tell somebody said, well, that's kind of redundant, but anyway, uh, we will be sharing the various categories of peripherals and headphones and keyboards and all kinds of cool stuff. And that'll be Back to our regular schedule, fourth Saturday, which will be January 22nd. And uh, let's see what other good stuff. So then uh, if you would like, we have Trekkie Talk, of course, it's on the first and third uh, Thursdays of the month. And now we're pretty soon, we're finishing up Discovery Season 3. And then in February, we're going to be starting The Next Generation Season 4. And we had already watched the first three seasons earlier. So... Uh, let's see what else. Our mentoring program. If you are interested in being uh, getting help with your iPhone, your new user, please fill out the application and then we'll match you up with one of our amazing uh, advanced users. So come and uh, be a part of that. It's all free. And if you're an experienced user and would like to share your knowledge with someone, we would welcome that. For social media, our social media, we have a Facebook page. It's iBug Today. Oh, it's facebook.com slash group slash iBug Today. Uh, we have a Twitter is at iBug Today. And let's see, we have our email. If you really would like to correspond with us, it's iBugToday at gmail.com. And then we also have a YouTube channel. So definitely subscribe there and then you will get notifications of, uh, you know, as our email, our podcasts are put up onto YouTube. You can also follow, you know, capture those on various podcast apps. Uh, you can ask the A-Lady to play them for you. So there's lots of ways to listen to our podcast as well as visiting our website. The best place to get all of this information is ibugtoday.org, the website, and you can see the movies, you can see our upcoming events, you can see, you know, the book that we're going to be reading. Everything is there. Our Zoom link is there. Our Clubhouse link is there. So with that, Shri, I hand it back to you. <laughs> Those poor children. Well, uh, thank you, Sonia. Definitely, there's a lot of things going on with iBug today. And I definitely encourage you guys to check out the website. That's what I typically do. So definitely check that out. All right, so today's topic, like I mentioned before, it's going to be using the Zoom app on your iPhone. And there are definitely lots of uh, features and functions within the Zoom app. And uh, unfortunately, we were not gonna able, we're not gonna be able to cover every single aspect of it because it's just way too much. But I think what we'll cover today uh, everyone here who's attending and those who are listening will definitely get a very good foundation understanding of the app and how you can be a, not only a participant, but uh, you can also be a host uh, using the app. Now, before I hand off to our presenters, I do want to talk a little bit about the Zoom video communication, the company itself. And uh, I want to take a deep dive look uh, at the company from the founder to the numbers. And these uh, numbers, when I go over it, you guys will be amazed as, as I was amazed. So who's the man behind the Zoom video communication? Uh, Eric Yang, he is the CEO and founder of the company. He founded the company in 2011 
and officially launched the company in January 15 of 2013. The company is based in San Jose, California, and currently Eric owns about 22% share in the company. And in 2020, Time named him Business Person of the Year. So now I'm gonna talk about the growth of the company based on numbers. And as I said, these numbers are very impressive. I was very surprised to hear these numbers. So in the first month when Zoom launched in 2013, they had 400,000 users signed up. And by the end of 2013, the total number of minutes used by the Zoom application exceeded 20 million minutes. That's 20 million minutes. But by February of 2019, that total number of minutes used by the application reached 60 billion minutes. And then when you go to January of 2020, that total number of minutes used by the application by users reached 101 billion minutes. And by April of 2020, the total number of minutes used by users reached 3.6 trillion minutes. And now they're going to be, they're expecting this to be uh, around that mark by end of the year. So you can see that these numbers have grown very heavily. Now, one thing uh, also I want to mention is in April, they had on average per users logged in, an average each day, they had more than 300,000 users logged in during the month of April 2020. And the company right now is expected to have revenues of about $2.7 billion. And um, what is also interesting is that, you know, the Zoom application comes in four tiers. You have the free, you have the pro account and the business account, and you have the enterprise account. And based on what plan you're in and what features you sign up uh, depends on the cost. But there are 157 subscribers who spent more than a million dollars annually using the Zoom platform. So these numbers to me were very impressive. They were very uh, uh, large, a lot more than I thought they were. So we can definitely see the growth of Zoom, especially during the pandemic. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pass along to my first presenter, uh, which is Terry Ann Storman. Terry Ann, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic to you. So if you wanna get us started about what you're going to present today. Thank you very much, Sri. Um, hello, everybody. I'm gonna be giving you some uh, additional information regarding Zoom uh, a few more numbers, and I'm going to talk about how uh, Zoom specifically applies to those of us who are um, not in the real high upper tiers that, that aren't spending thousands a year on Zoom. So those of us who maybe have the free account and the um, is the the pro account I think is that what you call the uh, the, the first paid tier I believe um, and I'm going to be showing you or not demoing but but explaining to you uh, what the a zoom invite looks like um, and a couple of other things giving you a couple of other details so if you're not familiar with the iPhone screen as you're uh, learning to use Zoom, maybe this will help you to have a better understanding of the layout of the screen for certain things. So with that, we'll begin. Thank you very much, Sri, and welcome to all those who are joining us for this month's iBug Cafe. There are numerous video and audio conferencing apps out there 
including WebEx, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, Facebook Messenger, FaceTime, GoToMeeting, and even WhatsApp. Uh, all have iPhone apps that are accessible, at least in part. However, the meeting platform that has seen the most significant growth since the uh, beginning of the pandemic, uh, which has been very usable for the blind community even pre-COVID, is the Zoom app. And it's spelled just like you would expect, Z-O-O-M, only because it's the title of an app, of course, it's capitalized. Uh, it began as a business platform in uh, about 2013, I believe, but it became an app uh, for individuals and really, as you may remember, really gained popularity during the pandemic because it was discovered that it could allow people to virtually communicate with one another, both visually and auditorily to take the place of this uh, forbidden in-person uh, communication and these in-person meetings. It is the top video and calling platform in 44 countries around the world today, according to LifeWire and even a couple of other sources that I came across. Uh, as many of you may remember, it had privacy concerns in 2019, but those have been addressed and resolved uh, due to the tightening of security credentials, as well as due to the introduction of end-to-end -end encryption. Regarding Zoom accounts, there are both free and paid versions of Zoom. Two people can chat for free for up to 30 hours and three people up to 100 people can chat for free up to 40 minutes. Although Zoom has been known to extend this time period during uh, times of the year, such as a uh, holiday season, and perhaps even just because the, the powers that be at a given time uh, became uh, more generous and just extended um, chat time for free versions. But you can also have a paid subscription to Zoom uh, if you are in the UK, you can pay eleven dollars, sorry, eleven pounds uh, ninety nine pence per month, or a hundred and nineteen pounds ninety pence for a year subscription. And if you're in the US for a monthly subscription, you can pay, $14.99 a month or $149.90 in U.S. dollars per year, which will allow you to uh, uh, be in a chat room, in a chat group for 24 hours um, from up to, for up to 100 people. And if you want this uh, time limit removed altogether, you can pay even a, a greater fee, I think up to $300, I believe it is. Um, and uh, that, that time limit is removed. And I think you can, at that point, um, have up to 500 people in your group. I'm not totally sure of that price point, but it is 
significantly uh, a higher price point uh, as it should be if you want to have more uh, chat time and more people able to join that chat. And uh, there are even subscriptions at a higher cost that will allow up to as many as a thousand people depending upon um, how much you want to pay and the, the type of subscription uh, you want to apply for. The benefits of the Zoom app for me are that it is the most user-friendly or among the most user-friendly apps of this type for those who use screen readers and developers appear to be very responsive to uh, improvement suggestions as well as when uh, identifying and repairing bug fixes. And uh, I think most of us would probably agree that uh, the security of Zoom is now quite good certainly much, much better than it was at the beginning of COVID. So how does one go about setting up a Zoom account? So the first thing you need to do is to download the Zoom app from the App Store and then open it up. Once you open it up, it will ask you to join a meeting sign up for a, for Zoom or sign in to a Zoom account. And you will want to double tap on sign up uh, on that uh, sign up option. Then you will be asked to confirm your age. And I think they do this in part to verify those who are going to be applying for student accounts. So you verify your age. And then Zoom will ask you to enter and confirm your email address and your first and last name. After which time you will want to double tap on the sign up button. And once you have done that, Zoom will send you an activation email. You want to double tap on the activate account button in the email that you just received from Zoom, or you will want to copy and paste that activation URL into your uh, mobile browser, like in, into uh, Safari, for example. And from there, uh, you will be asked to repeat the same steps that I just mentioned above and make an account just from your mobile browser. Once you get to the screen uh, that has your personal Zoom meeting and URL and your Start Meeting Now button, you can double tap on either one of those buttons to be taken to uh, the waiting room for your test meeting in the Zoom app. To open the meeting, you want to double tap the sign in button at the bottom of the screen. On the next screen, enter your login information, your email address, and your user ID, and double tap on the sign in button. And your test meeting should open up in the app. If you already have an account, it is very important that you keep the Zoom app updated because they very often now come out with updates to uh, repair bugs and enhance other features of Zoom, and even in some cases for security reasons. So it really is important to keep your Zoom app up to date. 
You can do this manually from the App Store by double tapping your profile icon at the top right hand side of your screen, scrolling down to the pending updates uh, button and double tapping on the update that appears next to the Zoom app. You can also update all of your iOS apps automatically if you wish. Then once uh, a new update for Zoom comes out, probably within 24 hours or thereabouts, you will have uh, an updated Zoom app. And you can go into the Zoom app and go to About in Settings and determine which version of the app you have. And uh, you can then go to the App Store and find the Zoom app and, and it will tell you um, once you open the link to the, the app in the App Store it, it, and just keep flicking to the right, it will eventually show you the updated, the most up-to-date version of the Zoom app there. So you can know if you have the most updated version if your uh, Zoom app has been updated automatically. The latest Zoom app right now is 5.9.1. That's 5.9.1. And so you want to make sure you have that version of Zoom in your uh, account. What does the Zoom meeting invite look like? Well, we can go to the iBug Today invite for the iBug Cafe meeting, which is this meeting. So you first see the iBug logo. And if you try to do an explore by touch to find the various um, things on your screen. Um, I, I don't want to say that everyone is going to have a difficult time with it, but I was not successful in locating the various um, icons that way. So I just kept swiping to the right. So the first thing you, you come across, as I said, is the iBug logo. Then there is a description of the subject matter for the iBug Cafe Zoom meeting. And then it tells you when the meeting is going to be held. It says when and then followed by the date of the meeting. Um, and then you have a further explanation of the iBug Cafe and uh, what it is in general terms and who facilitates the cafe and, and it happens to be Shri Roy and how the meeting will be executed and in this case it's through the Zoom conference. Then you see another item called join the Zoom meeting which is followed by the Zoom link, the URL to that Zoom meeting. And so if you click on that link, that is how you can join the meeting. And if you swipe to the right after that link, you see the 10-digit um, ID and the 9-digit meeting password, which can be very important uh, in terms of being able to join the Zoom meeting. Then you have the one tap mobile number from a smartphone that's listed. Then you have a, a phone number for dialing in from a landline phone as another way to, uh, to join the Zoom meeting. Then you have a statement that says for additional questions about the iBug Cafe, please contact Sri Roy. And then it gives you his email address. And uh, 
it uh, then the last thing you have is regards the iBug Today team uh, empowering the blind through accessible technology training. And then it shows their email address and uh, other social media information. And um, if you were setting up an account, you, you know, some of this information is optional. So you wouldn't necessarily have to show every type of item that is listed here. But I, these are the things that show up in the iBug Today Cafe invite. And it's a very similar thing for other iBug Today uh, Zoom invites. And uh, finally, what are the benefits of using a Zoom link? versus a dial-in phone number. iBug prefers the, the Zoom link to dialing in. Uh, the, the sound quality of the user, for one thing, is better. You have better access as a user to some of the features in the Zoom app on a Zoom link than you do for for dialing in. There are a number of things that can be done via a Zoom link that can't be done if you're dialing in on a, a landline phone, for example, or if you're dialing in on a smartphone. So this is why iBug prefers for users to join um, an iBug today meeting via Zoom as opposed to via a telephone. And of course, if you are using a landline phone, you only have the option of, of an audio communication. Whereas with a smartphone, you can in some cases um, join with a video feature as well. But again, you still don't have the access to many of the features that you have if you join the Zoom call via the Zoom link. So this concludes my portion of the Zoom discussion. And so I will now turn it back over to Shri for questions. All right, Terry Ann, thank you very much for your presentation. So now I'm going to go ahead and have Sandhya unmute everyone, and we're going to open it up for Q&A for five minutes regarding uh, the things that uh, Terry Ann covered. So just if you're close, uh, please focus a question on the things that she covered, and I'll open it up for about five minutes. So if anyone has a question, please state your name. I'll call upon your name, and then you can uh, ask your question or make your comment. So thank you. Sunday, are you build to unmute everyone or? Yep, they are. Okay. Uh, all right. If anyone has a question, please state your name. Anybody have any questions? You explained it really well. I guess, I guess yeah. so. Either that or I lulled everybody to sleep. I don't know. <laughs> Hope not. One, one comment I wanted to make, if I may, since we're not hearing any questions at the moment, um, you know, in some of the things I talked about, as is the case with computers in general, and of course, with iDevices specifically, they're oftentimes is more than one way to, to do a certain thing. So if some of you were, when I was talking about um, how to set up an account, for example, if you think, now, wait a minute, I, I do it a different way. Um, I just covered that one, one basic way. And it, it seems very complicated when you look, look at it. And and there may be some shortcuts that I perhaps maybe could have mentioned, but I wasn't familiar with them. So 
so if you're thinking, oh, what is she talking about? I don't, I don't do it this way at all. Um, you know, there might be a, another way to do the same thing. So I just wanted to point that out. I don't know. They have made, with updates, Zoom has made a number of additions to features and changes in features. So there could be some other things that I'm just not aware of, too. So I just wanted to point that out also. This is Chanel with a question. Yeah, go ahead, Chanel. Yeah, so sometimes I encounter people who don't want to create a Zoom account, and I just want to kind of be refreshed. Um, what are the advantages of creating a Zoom account, you know, even just for a free thing? Um, you know, what would encourage or entice someone to create an account? I thought maybe it had to do with, like, you could save your meeting history, but I, um, I'm not sure. So if you know, that would be great. Um, yes, if you, the, one of the advantages to creating an account uh, would be that it gives you the, the privilege, even with a free account, to converse with um, people, uh, to, or would, would, gives you the privilege of setting up a meeting instead of just being uh, invited to or, or joining in a meeting. You could yourself then set up a meeting and a meeting time if you're going to chat with one other person, you know, as I say, you have up to 30 hours to chat, or if you're wanting to uh, chat for 40 minutes, you can have uh, many more people in during that 40 minute time. Whereas if you don't have an account, you can be invited to join a Zoom call, but that's the extent of your um, abilities. So that's one thing that I can think of, and maybe some others have other thoughts about that. This is Brad. Go ahead, Brad. We'll talk a lot more about these advantages in the next of having an account in the next segment. Oh, great. Uh, this is Jim. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Uh, I have a question. Uh, when I come on. Uh, and it says uh, on my screen reader tells me that uh, you want to do cellular or Wi-Fi, and you swipe again, it'll say you want to do dial-up. So I swipe back and hit cellular or Wi-Fi. Is that does that mean I'm on the internet, right? Um, yes, it, it means. Well, either way, you're on the internet, but uh, it, that just tells you by what method you are joining the internet. It says cellular or Wi-Fi. Cellular and if, and or Wi-Fi, is that what you're saying? Yeah, am I on cellular or, or, or am I on Wi-Fi? Because I'm hitting, I'm hitting one button to do both. I don't... This is Brad. Yeah, yeah go Brad. ahead, Brad. It's giving you a choice. Uh, do you want to connect over data, which is cellular or Wi-Fi, depending upon how your iPhone connects to the internet? Okay. It may be a Wi-Fi connection. It may be a cellular. The other choice is over telephone. It will dial use up. your iPhone. No, not dial-up. It, okay. it will use your Zoom app to make a connection over a telephone call. Now that's not the same as joining Zoom dial-up, but right. it's just how is the Zoom app connecting to the Zoom server? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not to be confused with connecting to Zoom by making a, by dialing a phone number and connecting. That's doing it without using the Zoom app. Okay. Um, in it, in the section that says um, cellular or Wi-Fi, it depends on whether or not you have your Wi-Fi set up. If you do, it's chances are you're going to be connected via Wi-Fi if that's how your phone is currently connected. If it's cellular, it's because you don't have a Wi-Fi connection. Okay, that's so what if, that first option is. 
if my static bar says I have Wi-Fi three or three bars, then chances are I'm going on Wi-Fi, right? Pretty. So Brad, yeah, go ahead, Brad. Yeah, that'd be correct. It's gonna okay. it's gonna use Wi-Fi over cellular, and I actually have. In a minute, we're going to look at it. I, I have. I have an iPhone that's not activated, and that choice does not say Wi-Fi or cellular on my on that iPhone. It just says Wi-Fi because there is no cellular connection on that iPhone. Got it. Okay. All thank right. you. We need so, to move on, Shree. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, go to the next segment. And I think um, Brad's going to present the next part of our um, section that covers the participant side of using the. Zoom app. So Brad, um, I'm going to go ahead and hand the mic to you now. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yep. Let me make sure I turn. Okay. All righty, folks. Um, thank you, Sheree. Thank you, Terry Ann. Let's take a look as we alluded. Um, we're going to look at the Zoom app. Okay. And now you've downloaded it to your phone. And we're gonna open it like it was opened for the first time. So I'm holding here, I got two iPhones here. We're gonna look at two different things on it. The first one I'm looking at is my iPhone SE 2020. And this phone's not activated, but it does the job okay. Let's see, do we hear that okay? Hope it's up loud enough. Zoom. All right, so I got the iPhone open. Zoom. I'm gonna open the Zoom app. Start now, or join a meeting. I am not signed into a Zoom account. We'll get to some of the things about what the advantages and compare and contrast a Zoom, a signed in to a not signed in. This is like I've opened it for the first time. I'm on the introductory screen. Settings button. And there's a settings. We'll go look at that in a, in a second. Page one of four. Adjustable. This has got one of those things. It's just join meeting. Saying button. join meeting. Page one of page two of four. Join meeting button. Chat, chat with coworkers. And it's just telling. It's, it's actually it's got a graphic there that I can't see, and I guess it's just telling you a little bit about Zoom. You know how things do that. Page one, page two, page three. Settings. But there's no way to dismiss chat it. And, Anyhow. And friends via Zoom chat. So, uh, and I saw my chat with Zoom. That's one of those things Join you get meeting. to do when you're Welcome. signed in. Um, page, page two of page three of four. Collaborate in real time by screen okay. sharing. Real time by screen sharing. Page three of four. Page four of four. Get started. Okay. But if I tap on it, it doesn't go away. So we move down here. We got join meeting button. Join a meeting. Sign up. Sign up. Button. That's where we can sign up for a Zoom account. Sign in. Button. Sign in if you have a Zoom account. Okay. Let's look at um, join meeting button. One way Carrie Ann talked about joining a meeting through a Zoom link. Okay. So if you get an email or even a text message and it has a link in it, to join a Zoom meeting, you can always tap on that link. And if the Zoom app is on your iPhone, uh, it should automatically open the app and you are just taken straight into the meeting. You don't have to do anything. But maybe you don't have a link. Maybe you just have a meeting ID and uh, hopefully a passcode to go with it. This is where you can enter it. Join meeting button. Okay. Text field is editing. Insertion point at start. You're taken and by default, your voiceover focus is on the meeting ID. There is a keypad open down here at the bottom. It's like a regular one, two, three, four, regular telephone keypad. And I can enter the meeting ID as Terry said, it's a, usually a nine, maybe a 10 digit as there's more and more Zoom gets used more and more. These Zoom meeting IDs have grown. They used to all be nine digits. Now some of them are 10. One day we'll probably have 11 digit. Uh, but you can enter that meeting ID, okay? Join with a personal link name. Uh, personal link. I have not really used one of those. I think you, if somebody sends you a link to one of their personal meetings, that me what that is. Um, you have a screen name. Brad's iPhone SE. Okay, Text there's field. my screen name, and there's a way to change that. By clicking join, you and agree to our... join. You agree to terms of services, of course. Terms of service and privacy statement. These are links link. so that you can read them. Join. Tim. Join. Button. I haven't put anything Text in there. Field. Is editing. Let's Insertion pretend. Let's put one in here. One. One. 
four. Okay, I four. just made that up. Text field is editing. One, clear tag. Join with a personal link name. Join. I'm Button. just going to. Waiting. Elip in alert. Would you like to use Zoom with Siri? No. See, this is the first time I've ever used it. Apple to process. Don't allow. Button. Okay. No, Don't I'm not going to allow it. Invalid meeting ID. Of course, it's an invalid meeting Please ID. Please check and try again. Okay. Well, I was hoping it was going to prompt me for a meeting, I, but it's not because that's a, I just made that up. But had that been a real one, there would have been a prompt for a meeting ID, or if there's no meeting ID, uh, it probably would have taken me to a waiting room. Zoom has security. You All meetings must have either a, a passcode or a waiting room. Um, but obviously, like I said, I just made that up just to show you what it might do. So join meeting. Uh, let's look at 100%. There are settings. Page four setting. Get start settings. Basic Button. settings, because I'm not signed in. Settings. Meetings. Button. Okay, meetings. Uh, settings for meetings. Audio. Heading. Audio. Auto connect audio. Wi Fi or cellular data. Okay, here's Button. the question Jim was just asking. Audio. Auto connect audio. Wi-Fi or cellular data well, button. There's a button. So I get to op tap on this and I've got my choices. Auto connect, cancel, cancel. I have off, off. I don't, I'm not telling it either. And it's going to ask me every time. Selected Wi-Fi or cellular data. Wi-Fi or cellular data. Okay. Well, I still got the cellular there, even though this is not a activated phone, but here's the one I was incorrect a second ago because Selected. there's not a Wi choice for phone. Data. When we look at my other one, we'll see. Because I can't make a phone call. This this uh, iPhone is not activated. Cancel. So that's what's in there for meetings. Um, under that, um, auto connect audio. Can auto connect my audio. Mute my microphone. Switch button. There's a choice. You want your microphone muted when you automatically enter a meeting. Mine is set to off, which means the microphone is on. It's kind of a little confusing. Off means your mic is on. On means your mic is off. In this case, because it's asking. Mute your microphone. Use original audio. Use this original audio. Original audio is a setting that, well, let me start over. Zoom has got really good noise suppression. It hides background noises. Uh, say you're in an office, you got traffic noise or a lawnmower outside. Zoom's going to uh, mute that stuff. Uh, and it makes for a good meeting experience. But maybe you want to play music or you're in karaoke or something. You don't want uh, any of that stuff muted. If you're playing a guitar, piano, people singing in the background, you don't want any of that muted because that's not that's that's going to hurt the experience you're trying to. So that that is where auto um, the um, original sound comes in. Generally speaking, you want original sound turned off because you want Zoom noise suppression. Video. Then there's a question about video similar to audio. Turn off my video. Switch Do you button. want your video on or off when you zoom? join a meeting, um, being blind vision impaired, most of the meetings I join are with other blind and vision impaired people. I tend to keep my video turned off. Another advantage to video turned off is it saves bandwidth. And, uh, but also be aware of that because if you're joining meetings with sighted people, they like that video on. Touch up my appearance. Touch up off. appearance. Button. Again, if you're using video, you may want, Zoom has got some automatic features to change the way lighting looks and makes you look a little better. I'm not really sure how well that works. Virtual background for You can have meetings. a virtual background. I don't have one set up. Um, settings. That's really Back all button. I want to look at in settings. settings. General. Uh, general. Let's see what's in general. Blur snapshot on tasks. Settings. Back blur snapshot on tasks. Okay. Switcher. When I'm in when I'm in the app switcher, it calls it task switcher, but the after you can blur um, the zoom screen is blurred that's a sighted user thing that way people can't maybe see your video that's turned on use call kit to receive calls when not on zoom. i have in no it. idea what call kit is uh, zoom has a feature that uh, can allow um zoom phone calls um it's a pay extra it's one of their professional business features um and i'm surprised that that's even in here because i'm not signed in but maybe i would get a link so settings um general close Button. I'm going to close Settings. this. Close. Button. And that's really all there is to it when you're not signed in. Let's look at my other iPhone where I am signed in. Now, there's a lot more going on in here. 1655. Sunday, January 9th. Okay. Here we are. I'm in the Zoom app. It is open on my iPhone. I am signed into it. Now, there's a lot here. 
a lot a lot of it is beyond the scope of this presentation so bear with us as we kind of um move around the app and look at the high points here meet and chat okay i'm at the top of the screen meet and chat and, oh there first of all there are four tabs across the bottom of the screen selected Meet and, meet and chat. 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 Okay. One, meetings. Meetings. Chat. Two, contacts. Contacts. Chat. Three of settings. And chat. settings. Four of four. Some of that we've already looked at. There's more stuff in here because I'm signed in. Meet and chat. Okay. Heading. Meet and chat. Start a chat. Button. It's got a chat feature like a lot of other apps do. LinkedIn has a chat feature. Everybody's familiar with WhatsApp. Facebook has a chat feature. They've got something similar to it. Uh, I'm not going to get into it right now because that's one of those things just beyond the scope of what we're talking about. We're trying to focus on just regular Zoom meetings. Okay. I now have four buttons. Bob Braxma, no, offline, that's, external uh, user, offline. ongoing call. I tried the chat feature, and that's a friend of mine. Um, Selected, meet and chat. Okay. New meeting button. There are four buttons across Actions the top. Available. First one is Zoom meeting. Join. Join. Button. Join a meeting. Schedule. Button. Schedule. Schedule Actions a meeting. Available. Michael's going to talk about that a little bit more in his part of the presentation. Share screen. Button. Share screen is a way to Actions share screen. Available. Usually that's done after you're in a meeting, but this is a way to maybe do nothing but join a meeting and all you're doing is sharing the screen. Uh, I have not messed with that before, and that's kind of beyond the scope of this presentation. First, let's look at the second button. Join, join a meeting. This is really very Actions similar text field. Is editing. to what we Insertion did before. We have join with a personal link name. Text field. We have the same as before. Character okay. Mode. Meeting history. Join with a personal link name. Screen name. Brad. Okay, text it's got field. my screen name. Join. Dim. I could change screen my name. screen name. Brad. Join. Dim. Join the join buttons dim because I haven't put anything in. If you in. received an invitation, join options. Join options. Don't just connect to audio. Just like Switch before. Button. Turn off my video. One. Okay, we got the same thing. So a lot of this is the same. Join okay? with a personal One link thing we didn't field. look at before. Is Meeting history. Is to the right of the meeting ID field is a meeting history. I can double tap. There's not a whole lot in here right now because I kind of cleaned it out. But we have previous meetings I've attended. NFBT Dallas chapter month. Okay, there is, it's a picker item. So I want by default your rotor should go to a picker, just value. Michael Amaro's personal meeting room. Brad's Zoom meeting. Brad's personal meeting room. Two, and those Brad's are, personal meeting room. and that's what we've got two, in seven, there. So seven, three, there's one. my meeting ID. I can done. done. It will select that one, and meeting you'll see two, seven, seven, three, one, my four. personal meeting ID is is in there. Okay, uh, and I'm ready to join the meeting. Meeting history. Join with a personal link. Mm -hmm. Screen name. Join. Now button. our join button is is live. So why don't we go ahead and join a meeting? And we'll take a look at what our meeting screen is. Okay. So someone, waiting. I am in the meeting and my voiceover got real quiet. Let me see if I can turn it. Screenshot, possible text. You are using the device audio. Okay. See, Hopefully we can hear that. Dagger, mute more. Okay. Start I am in the meeting. Let's look at what's on the meeting screen. This may be familiar to some of you. Speaker on. Button. says my speaker is on. You are using enhanced encryption. Yes, Image. we are. Enhanced encryption. It's one of those things Terry Ann was talking about. Zoom now uses end-to-end -end encryption, so it makes everybody feel more secure. Zoom. Button. Meeting information. End. Button. There's an end button. That's where you get out of the thing. Mute my audio. Button. Okay. I am... There's not a whole lot on the screen. There's an end button up at the top. Right? Displaying Brad 82% just end. Button. Up top right corner is the end button. Okay. Down across the bottom of the screen, Mute my audio. lower button. left, as you've heard, if you ever attend an iBug meeting, we tell you that the mute button is in the lower left corner of your iPhone screen. Start my video. Start button. my video. I can turn my video on. Share content. Share button. content. That's where I can share, say, play a file, share a, a video clip or a PowerPoint presentation, something of that nature. I've never done that on the phone. I've done that many times on a computer, but never on the phone. One participant. One participant. More. And button. there's that more button, which is where if I tap on it, there's a number of things in there, including the raise hand. Security. Button. Security. Record to the cloud. I am hosting this meeting, so some things in here are going to be different than if I was Enable just Enable original sound. Meeting settings. Enable original, original sound. sound. Meeting settings. Minimize meeting. Background and filter. Disconnect audio. Raise hand. Button. There's that raise hand button. Cancel. Button. And cancel. 
One participant. participant. I can open a participant screen. Close. Here Button. I see a list of all the participants in the meeting, obviously. Participants. One. One. Meeting. I'm the only one. Correct. Device audio unmuted. Video stop. And that's me. Close. Now, if there was 10, 15 people, I'd be able to continue swiping to the right, and I would go down the list of participants in the meeting. Um, that's pretty much all that's here. There is. There is an invite button or I can copy the invite invitation and I guess I can text it to somebody or send an email and send them a meeting, uh, an invitation to join my meeting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm closed. That's really all there is to this screen. It's really pretty simple. It's got my little avatar, some little generic man with a head in the middle of the screen i guess end, but uh because i have no picture for me end, so i'm going to end and end meeting for all and button. i am out of the meeting and meeting Delete meeting and meeting for yes, all yes and meeting for all search search okay because i was the host or even if you're not the host it asks confirms you really want to leave i think if i'm in a regular meeting it doesn't ask i'm just out of there okay let's quickly look at a couple of other things in here i don't know where we are on time New meeting. New Button. meeting. I can Action's start available. a new meeting. Soon. Cancel. Got about four minutes, start Brad. All righty. Start a use person. Start a meeting. Button. Start a meeting. Use personal meeting ID. Use PMI. personal meeting ID. That's how we got into that meeting. It was in my meeting history. I did this once before, joined it, and that's what put it in my history. Start a meeting. Start Button. a meeting. That's what. Start a meeting. Button. That would do it right then. I would start the meeting. So let's go back out of meeting here. Chat. Join. Button. Join. New meeting. Join. Schedule. Button. Schedule. Michael's going to talk about Actions that. Down here on the bottom, we meeting. have meetings. Tab. Meetings. meeting. Tab. This Two is one four. of the advantages of having your um, your account you're signed into. I've got selected me meetings. Meetings. Tab. Two contacts. If I have meetings in my, this is really cool. I have meetings in my iOS calendar, and if I have added a Zoom link to the location, they will show up here. And I can go here and start a meeting. For example, settings, settings. I have 18. ACB today. I have one planned to plan this evening at 6 p.m. 18. ACB host. So it says meeting. 18. That's 1800. That's 6 p.m. It says I've got a ACB host meeting tonight. Uh, I've got Web. 19. Bits round table. I've got Access. a bits round table scheduled for Wednesday at said, I think it said 19 at 7 p.m. It will also, if I continue down the list, any meetings I have created with my own account. Recurring meeting. Recurring Heading. meetings. Ladies of distinction. Ladies social. of distinction. That's something I created for my wife. It's a social club she does. I created that for her. So any, any meetings I have created on my own account are all listed here. Um, contacts. Tab. Going back Three to the four. tabs Meeting on the bottom, chat. contacts. Tab. Selected. Meetings. Tab. Meetings. Contacts. Contacts. Tab. That's where I can have contacts listed in there for that chat feature that I don't use. So there's really nothing in there. Settings. Settings. Tab. We've already kind of looked at that before. There are more stuff in there. Um, a lot of it has to do with stuff there, like Meetings. I said, are beyond Brad. the scope of Three this. Three stars. Brad, SML. there's my account. I can go in there and adjust to my profile. I can change my uh, display name, although I can't get it to work. I change it and the button um, done stays dimmed. I don't know why. I've done that on the desktop application, but I don't seem to be able to do it here. Meetings. Button. There's meetings. We already looked at that. On the other iPhone, same settings. Contacts. Contacts. Button. This is where I can tell it to look at my iPhone contacts, but we're not doing that. Today. Chat. Button. Chat. There's another chat feature for when you're in um, a, a meeting, I think, or is that the, con the, the messaging feature? General. Button. General, we looked at that before. Scan QR code, button. Scan QR code, apparently this is new. I had never seen it before. Apparently people could send you, a, instead of a meeting link, a QR code. And somehow you use that to join a meeting. Or maybe you, you it's external and you have it on a print printed material and you can use your iPhone's camera. I am not familiar with that one. Siri shortcuts. Siri Bye. shortcut, you can set up a bunch of Siri shortcuts, obviously when we're in the other iPhone. It asked me if I wanted to use Siri and there's a whole list of pre-programmed Siri shortcuts you can enable, join a meeting, do this, do that. About. And Bye. about, this tells you your version of the app. 
and some other things. So that was a quick tour of the Zoom app on our iOS device. And that's about all I've got time to talk about. All right, Brad, thank you very much. Um, so once again, we're gonna go ahead and open it up. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and state your name. I'll call upon you and you can go ahead and ask the question and I just kindly ask everyone else to stay muted during that time, okay? So Sandy, if you can do me a favor and just unmute everyone again and we'll take some questions for five minutes about the things that Brad covered. Yep, they're all set. This is Dan. Uh, go ahead, Dan. Okay, I have two questions for Brad. Um, number one, what type of account do you have for Resume? Is it free or paid? And well, actually three, I guess. Number two is I'm trying to understand that this uh, this virtual meeting that you that you set up, where you were the only participant, did you um, you didn't really cover that? Is there some place out there where you can just click a link or click a button that says uh, create virtual meeting. Uh, and then the th other question that I have is on the invite button, uh, if you want to send a link, a Zoom link to somebody, how do you do that with the invite button? So those are, those are my questions. Okay, let me see if I can take those, if I can remember them all in order. My account, I have a, I do pay for an account. I pay for a, a pro account. It's the one that's fourteen ninety nine a month. I do it because um, I host things um, through my um, one of my local chapters. Yeah, uh, ACP. Al, I, I know. I've heard you. I, I, I yeah. I also um, um, my wife uses my well. My wife and we don't have two accounts. I let her use mine. She hosts a, a, a little ladies group, they do book clubs and uh, other things they were doing during the pandemic. Um, so, you know, she'll use that. So anyway, uh, I, that's why I have. Now, even if I did not pay for a pro account, I had just created an account and um, and, and had the free version of the experience inside the app there would be the same. I could still create meetings. The only difference is how many people can be in a meeting, as I believe Terry and covered in her presentation. If I have a free account, I'm limited to uh, two people. I have unlimited time, three or more. I'm limited to, I believe she said 40 minutes uh, or, but with a pro account, I can have up to a hundred people. And, uh, you know, I can't remember what the limit is. I think Terry said 30 hours. I thought it was 24 either way. I've never had a meeting go anywhere near that long, but I'm able to hold meetings. Um, as far as a virtual meeting, well, actually that wasn't a virtual meeting. That was just a real meeting. I was just the only one in it. It's no different than if I opened up, um, we opened up the iBug room and I was the only one in it. No one else had joined yet. Um, I just opened that up. When you have a Zoom account, be it a, a free account or a pro account, Everyone has what's called your personal meeting ID. And it is just a quick way to start a meeting. You don't have to create a meeting or go through the things that Michael's gonna talk about in his part of the presentation. I just use my personal meeting ID to start a meeting. I had done that the other day, practicing some things, getting ready. And it's one of the reasons it showed up in my meeting history is I had done that. Um, I was just the only one in the meeting. Um, if I had told Sri and sent him an email, said, hey, let's get together and have a meeting about something, you know, meet me at three o'clock. And I go in and then Sri clicks on his link. Sri would have been in the meeting with him, but I was just doing a demo real quick to show you the screen and I was the only one in. Uh, as far as the invite link, I believe if I tap on that, it's going to open up your usual iOS share sheet. And it's going to ask me, how do I want to share it? and I can tap on message and it'll then bring up a little uh, text message window and I can uh, type in you know, who I want to send it to and then send a message, just like as if I was maybe in the news app and I yeah, wanted but, to but, share a news story with somebody. Uh, this is Dan, right, but, but how about uh, 
you know, iBug sends out the links on the email. How do you? That's how do you? That's different. I think Michael's going to cover that in his part. Okay. All right, we can take one more question. If not, we'll go to yeah, the next Dana. Uh, go ahead, Dana. Yeah, Brad. Um, that was a good uh, presentation you gave. Uh, but um, I have a question. Um, how you were talking about the audio and visual settings? Um, how how do I go about setting them so they are the way I set them for the next time? Every time um, I log into Zoom. Um, I have to reset them. If you op are you if you open the Zoom app on mm -hmm. your iPhone and go to where it says settings, okay. under settings you will find an option for meeting, and you should be able to go in there by uh, by setting your audio. You mean, do you want your your audio unmuted or muted when you enter a meeting? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now even if you set it to be, you could set it there to be, I always want to be unmuted. Okay, well, you, you have just said that I wanna go in unmuted, but when you join a meeting, the, meet, the, the, peop, the person who set up the meeting you are joining also has controls and they can set it so that all people are muted when you enter a meeting or people are unmuted, that is beyond your control. Okay. So there's, a, there's things you could do on your end, but they can be overridden by what goes on by the meeting organizer. Okay, uh, what about the visual part? I think the same thing. Okay. I have my video set to always be off, so I'm always off no matter what. Okay, yeah, that's but, what I want. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and I do that just because I I always I just you know I don't use video and that okay, way I right. go in there and scratch my nose, do whatever, and I know nobody's looking at me. Yeah, okay, so, you know, but I, and yeah. I know it's off. I have it set so it's off. Now again, you can join a meeting, and the meeting organizer can have it set so that video is is off always off or i don't think they can make it so it's always on but they okay. can make it so that they you know uh it can be on if you want it to be all right thank you all right um let's go ahead and go to our last presenter i'm going to have michael mccauley talk about you know beyond being a participant really the the nuts and the details of being a host. I think this is something that, uh, you know, we as participants, we always just kind of be a participant, but now let's see how we can be a host using the uh, Zoom app on your iPhone. So Michael, why don't you tell us how that works? All right, thanks, Shri. All right, excellent job, Terry Ann and Brad. And some of what I'll cover with a little bit of overlap with Brad, but that's okay. So yeah, as Sri said, uh, the real, you know one of the real powers of the app is to allow you to actually host a meeting, and there's a couple of ways to do that, and uh, one of them actually came up during the question. Let me just open my. 5:14 p.m. Calendar Sunday, January 9th. One new notification. Double tap to open. Screenshot. Open Zoom. Zoom, screenshot, button, at meet and chat, heading. All right, so I just opened the Zoom app and I came in on the screen that's called meet and chat. Uh, Brad went over the uh, buttons down at the bottom of the uh, Zoom app and one of them was meet and chat. And so that's where I am right now. Uh, that's the main one that I would use to uh, Initial, initiate a meeting. So uh, during the, one of the previous questions, uh, well, first, let me just, uh, from the meeting chat title, I'll just swipe and let you hear the, the four buttons there that come up. Start a chat, dim, button. Well, skip that. New meeting, button. All right. Actions available. The new meeting, that's kind of to create that instant meeting. Join, button. And Brad, Actions available. Brad went over the join button. Schedule, button. Actions available. Schedule is the other way to initiate a meeting. Share screen. 
Button. And Actions available. That's the other button, share screen. So I'm going to go back to the uh, start. Join. New meeting. Button. The new meeting. Actions available. To start an instant meeting. So if I double tap that. New meeting. Cancel. Button. Start a meeting. Heading. And I'm just swiping right going down through the screen here. Video on. Switch button. Off. Double tap to toggle setting. Okay. So as Brad just mentioned, now, uh, me as the uh, host, I have control over how I want the meeting to be run. So one of the things I can set is to have the video on or off. Right now, the video on button is turned off. So everybody that comes into the meeting, their videos would be off. Use personal meeting ID, PMI, 696812567. Switch button, on. Okay. Double tap to toggle setting. And there's my personal meeting id by the way this is just a uh just the basic free account that i'm using here start a meeting button and then the only other button on the screen is to start the meeting and so if i were to double tap that i would immediately be in the meeting and as brad showed once i'm in that meeting then from there i could get down to the invite button and start inviting people uh, via the invite button, which does bring up the uh, regular iOS share sheet and either email or uh, mes using the messages app could send those out to people as well as various other ways. So that that's the quick and dirty way to uh, start a meeting. I'm going to exit out of that, go up back up to the top left corner to cancel out. Cancel button. Meet and chat. Heading. The one I prefer is actually to schedule a meeting. New meeting. Join. Schedule. Button. Actions available. So double tapping on schedule, schedule a meeting. Cancel. Button. Schedule meeting. Heading. Save. Button. All right. So I'll just walk down through, let you hear all the steps on setting scheduling a meeting. Your scheduling settings have been synced from your Zoom web portal. All right. So I'm not going to cover this during this uh, presentation, but you can uh, log in on the website on the uh, zoom.us website and using your login credentials, uh, go in and uh, set up various host settings. And so what it's doing, it's pulling in a lot of those settings that had already been set up, which a lot of those also can be set up uh, uh, directly here in the uh, on the app itself too. Close button. Meeting topic. Michael McCulloch Zoom meeting. Text field. Double tap to edit. Okay, so there's the uh, where I can uh, set the title for the meeting. It automatically just calls it, you know, Michael's whatever uh, Zoom meeting, and I'll just leave that for now. Starts today at six p.m. Button. Okay, it just automatically will pick a start time at the next, uh, I thought it picked it at the next half hour, but apparently it's picking it at the next hour. So 6 p.m. Central Time. I'll go ahead and leave that. Duration, 30 minutes, button. Uh, since it's a free account, I know I can't go over 40 minutes if I want to have three or more people. So I'm just going to leave it as a 30 minute. I could change it to make it you know go right up to the 40 minutes but it's kind of immaterial once you start a meeting you go until you reach the time limit and then zoom will kick you off time zone central time us and canada button and i'll just leave it being central repeat never button and if i wanted to uh you know have a repeating meeting I, that's where i would set that right there go in and have it be repeating Calendar, I calendar, button. And it will also sync up, uh, I think Brad mentioned, uh, you know, in his calendar that uh, the, it will actually set the uh, set up the uh, calendar event and set the location to be the URL for this meeting if I set it up that way. So that's why we, we'll leave it set that way. Use personal meeting ID. Six nine six eight one two five six seven four. Switch button off. Double tap to toggle setting. Okay, so right now it's turned off. I, my personal meeting ID. If I want to use that 
I think it was a 10 digit number. I could use that if I want to set it to something that's maybe easier to remember, then I could uh, go in and do that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it. If this option is enabled, any meeting options that you change here will be applied to all meetings that use your personal meeting ID. I guess I should slow my speech down. Maybe. Characters, words, speaking rate, 60, 60, 55%. Security, heading, require meeting passcode. Only users who have the invite link or passcode can join the meeting. Dimmed, switch button, on. Okay, so this, one of my defaults is having a passcode. So it will create a passcode for me. Passcode, text field, double tap to edit. So it's uh, created a passcode. It didn't read it out for some reason. Enable waiting passcode, text field, double tap to edit. Okay, I guess I would have to double tap to edit it. If I want to make up some, you know, create my own passcode, then I can uh, create it. Uh, but let me just double tap that and see what it actually created for me. Text field is editing, ACWBR8, insertion point at start. Okay. That Use the rotor to access misspelled words. I'll just leave it as the default passcode. Save button. Save. In progress. The meeting cancel button. HTTPS colon slash 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 us zero four web zoom a slash j slash seven seven six two five seven eight four four seven zero question mark PWD equals I got three got zero H. Okay, so it's reading off what the uh, URL will be if it uh, got sent out. Invitees, none, button. Okay, so here, unlike the instant meeting, I can go ahead and double tap this and start adding uh, people from my contact list anyway. Or if I have someone's email, then I can add it in right here. Alert, 15 minutes before, button. Allow it to send out an alert to the calendars or also just the app alerts will go out. 15 minutes prior to the meeting start time. Second alert, none, button. I don't have a second alert. Show us, busy, button. I'm gonna show on my calendar as being busy. HTTPS colon slash slash. Michael McCulloch is inviting you to a scheduled Zoom meeting. Join Zoom meeting. HTTPS colon slash 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 us zero four web. Zoom, a slash J slash seven seven six two five seven eight four four seven zero question mark. PWD equals I got three got zero HXXQNXC 805 EVDH key seven ZW one meeting ID seven seven six two five seven eight four four seven zero return passcode ACWBR8 text field double tap to edit use the rotor to access misspelled words. Okay, so it generated a little, uh, you know, meeting uh, invitation there. And as you heard, it's a text field. So I could double tap that, edit that to be whatever I want it to be. And then that would get sent out uh, along with the invitation. Okay, so at that point, up in the top right corner, add button. There's an add button. So once I uh, double tap on the add button, that would uh, create the invite. Uh, or create the meeting, it would send out the invites and would be all set to go. All right, I'm just going, to, I'm not going to actually uh, create this I'm, since I've, I've got another meeting already created. Cancel button, cancel alert. Are you sure you want discard changes button? Meet and chat heading. Okay, so I, uh, prior to the meeting, I had uh, created, scheduled a meeting with uh, Terry Ann, Brad, and Shri. And so now I'm going to ask them to go ahead and join that meeting on their iPhones. And hopefully this will all come through. They'll stay muted and hopefully you can hear all of us through my iPhone in the meeting. So I'm going to down at the bottom. Meet chat, tab bar, meetings, contacts, meetings, tab. Two of four. All right, found the meetings tab. And as Brad show, showed a while ago that uh, it lists the uh, different meetings that you have on your schedule. And let's see the one. 5 p.m. 
iBug Cafe, Zoom host demo, meeting ID 784-5048-5900. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, scheduled meeting that I had created prior to the, the meet, uh, this actual cafe today and it had invited them. So I'm going to go ahead and start that meeting. Cancel button. Start button. Waiting. Audio alert. To hear others, please join audio. Wi-Fi, Brad, Brad entered the Wi-Fi or cellular data. Wi-Fi, you are using the device audio. Terry Ann Sorman at Zoom. Thank you. Three, boy entered the wait, three, three people entered the waiting room. Three people entered the waiting room. View button. All Make right. The meeting expanded. Button. For some reason, the volume drops once this meeting started, and I have my volume on my phone all the way up. So hopefully, you guys can still hear this. All right. So it told me the three of them had uh, came into the meeting, and so I had set it up to be have a waiting room. Close. Button. And so I will go and find each of them and admit them into the meeting participants for heading waiting room expanded admit all button okay so if i want to admit all of them and i'm pretty sure that i know that all of them i could just hit use the admit all button but i will just go in individually and look at each of their names and then uh, individually admit them brad no audio video stop admit button admit Terry Ann Sorman, no audio, video, admit, button, admit, joining, Terry Ann Sorman, admit, button, admit, admit, button, admit, joining, ellipsis, Terry Ann Sorman, no invite, button, close, button, displaying Brad's avatar, unmute my audio, audio now unmuted. Okay, so we should all be in the meeting now. Brad, Terry Ann, Sri, are you guys all there? Yes, I am here. All right, very good. Okay, so we have a Zoom meeting going on inside a Zoom meeting, the iBug Cafe Zoom meeting. I think this is the first time we've ever done this. Kind of, you guys have heard picture in picture while we're doing Zoom and Zoom. Uh, let's see. You guys uh, just stay there for a minute. Start. Uh, Four participants. Button. Close. Uh, invite. Button. Close. Button. Displaying. One thing uh, when you're meeting. hosting a meeting on the Not iPhone, it's a little bit Next cumbersome time. if you want to go Five. between, uh, you know, looking at your participants and controlling the meeting because you could you have to bring up one screen at a time and so that makes it a little cumbersome uh the uh, on the host the host screen that i have down at the bottom mute my audio button bottom left is uh, very similar it's the uh, mute start my video button share content button for participants button more button Okay, and I'm just going to uh, double tap on the more button and Security. show you the controls that uh, you have as a host. Security. Chat. Enable original sound. Meeting settings. Minimize meeting. Background and filters. Disconnect audio. Back minute meeting. Enable original sound. Chat. Security. All right. Uh, let me look at the security first. Security, heading, security, lock meeting, switch button, off, double tap to toggle settings. So I could lock the meeting if I didn't want anybody else to enter the meeting, you know, say Brad was goofing off and he accidentally forwarded the meeting to someone else, that meeting inv invite, and they got a hold of it and they wanted to come join and it's going to be a private meeting, I could lock it. Waiting room, switch button, on. But to even if he had done that, 
I've got the waiting room set on, so it's going to keep everybody out of the main room and they'll sit in the waiting room until I admit them. So that's one extra security feature I have. Hide all profile pictures. Switch button off. Double tap to toggle setting. Uh, I guess some people, I'm not sure why, but they may try to post something that's not uh, very nice in their profile pictures. And so you could turn profile pictures off. You can hide those. Allow participants to share screen, switch button off, double tap to toggle setting. So here's where if I wanted to allow all the participants, if we were going to co be collaborating on something and sharing information on each of our different uh, devices, then I would turn that on. Chat with everyone and anyone directly button. If we wanted to have the chat feature, uh, you can totally disable that like we do for the regular iBug meetings. We have the chat feature disabled and that's why none of, none of you guys can, you know, you even have a chat button on your uh, device when you join our iBug meetings. Rename, switch button, on. Double tap to toggle setting. Okay, it's set on so the participants can rename themselves if they want, but I could turn that off and it would lock all of that out. Unmute, switch button, on. Double tap to toggle setting. That's a, a master unmute. If I wanted to unmute everybody. Start video, switch button, on. And then a, vid a video if I wanted to allow people to have their video show. And then the biggest thing, uh, if I wanted to remove a participant from the meeting, there's a button to do that. Suspend participant activities. If the meeting got totally out of control and you know people were Zoom bombing and everything was going really crazy haywire, there's a the final button at the bottom of that screen is to suspend the meeting, and basically that locks everybody's uh, mics, turns off everybody's uh, audio, turns off everybody's video, uh, doesn't allow anyone to come into the meeting. Uh, I guess people could leave on their own, but other than that, it pretty much locks out the meeting and sus suspends the meeting at that point and then allows uh, me as the host to go troubleshoot, figure out, you know, who the bad character is or determine what I want to do at that point. So those are some of the uh, nice security features that you have as a host. And again, this is all just on the, uh, the free uh, version. Done button. So I'm going to back out of that uh, done button up in the top right. More button. Three people entered the waiting room. All right. Uh, now I'm going to go look at the uh, participant button. Four participants button. Close. Participants. Michael McCullough. Sri Roy. Brad. Terry Ann Sorman. Device audio muted. Video stopped. Okay, so it shows option. my participants, it tells me whether their uh, audio is, if they're, uh, you know, their mics are on or off, their videos on or off. Uh, then at the bottom right, more button. there's a more button. So if double tap that. Mute all. So, you know, we uh, joke around a lot with Sandhya that uh, you know she's the uh, mute queen, whatever. And so that's the button that she has access to, to mute everybody all at once. So if I double tap that. Mute all, mute all current and new participants. Mute all button. And if keeps, all right, so that's the button to actually mute all, but, but if I keep on swiping. Cancel. But allow participants to unmute themselves. Switch button on. Double tap to toggle setting. So that that switch allows me to actually, if I turn that off, then if I mute all, the participants cannot unmute themselves. If I have that but switch turned on, then even if I mute all, you know, just if I wanted to quickly make the noise go away and then let participants go ahead and unmute themselves, then I would leave that on and do a mute all. 
So I'm just going to do a button. mute all here. Close button. And now everyone except myself. Michael Brad, device audio muted, video stop. Sri Roy, device audio muted, video stop. Terry Ann Sorman, device audio muted, video stop. Okay, so Double we heard for additional we heard everybody's device audio was muted. So now I'll ask all, all of you guys, Brad, Shree, and Terry Ann, if you'll unmute yourselves. I'm unmuted. Terry Ann Sorman, I'm device unmuted. audio unmuted. Video all stop. All right, very good. So that is the basics of uh, being able to. Uh, run the meeting uh there was one other there was one other uh uh feet one other option under the more button so and besides the mute all ask all to unmute and that is to ask all to unmute and that unmuted all and made them where they could not unmute then I could hit that button and that would then allow them to unmute themselves. Cancel button. Close. Button. Okay. So those are uh, the basic steps of, um, you know, setting up a meeting as a host, uh, some of the controls that you have as the host. It gives you a, a real sense of uh, power being a host for any of you power hungry people. You get to uh, control the life of other people. Anyway, just kidding. Uh, I guess, uh, Shri, uh, we can, uh, well, let me, hold it. I gotta, I gotta end the meeting, I forgot. Close, button. All right. Displaying Terry Ann's three people entered the waiting room. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Uh, before you end the meeting, do you wanna show how you put somebody in the waiting room? In shot, five. Oh, okay, that was an option I didn't do, okay. Terry Ann Sorman. Mute start these sequence more for participants. Button. All right, let me go back to the Close. Go back button. to the participant list. A tree in the waiting room. Invite button more. Button. Mute all. Cancel button. Close button. Okay, so I'm going to put one of them in the waiting room. Participants. So I'll go back to the participant list. Michael McCup Brad. Device audio. And I'll pick on Brad. Stop. Double tap for additional so, options. I find Brad in the participant list and I double tap on his name. Brad. And then I get a whole uh, set of options to do with Brad. So let's see what I can do with Brad. Mute. Ask to start video. Chat. Make host. Rename. Put in waiting room. Remove. All right. So you, hopefully you heard all of that. I could actually make Brad the host of the meeting. Uh, with this free version, uh, it doesn't, it, you, you as the, it, what am I trying to say? There are options on the pro version to make people co-host, but the free version, the only option I have is to, you know, give up host privileges and turn that over to someone else. And I cannot make anyone a co-host and for me to remain the host, which I don't like. But anyway, if I had to, you know, if I, for some reason I was needing to leave the meeting, then I could make Brad a host or, but in this case, uh, one of the options was to put him in the waiting room. So we'll do that. Put in waiting room. Double tap on that. Close button. And if I go back up to the participant list, waiting room expanded button shows now it shows me the waiting room. Brad, device audio muted, video stop. Double and, tap for additional options. Okay, so he's in the waiting room. If I wanted to let him back into the main room, I'll swipe again. Admit button. And there's the admit button. Admit. Joining ellipsis. Brad, device audio muted, video and stop. And Brad Michael should McCullough. be back device in the main audio room now. Video stop. Post. All right, very good. Okay, so I think that I've explored pretty much all the options there for uh, hosting a meeting and the controls that you have as, as a host.
So let me close the participant list, get back to the main. Displaying Brad's app, but three people entered the way. And up at the top right will be the end button in the meeting button. End button. End meeting for all button. And in this case, I could end the meeting for all. Leave meeting button. Or I could just leave the meeting. If I chose the leave meeting button, uh, the Zoom app would automatically ask me to make someone else a host before I can leave the meeting since I am the, uh, the host of the meeting. But for our demo purposes, I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, little demo Zoom meeting. End meeting for all button. End meeting for all. Zoom. Fine. All right. So that concludes uh, my part of the presentation. And I guess we can open it up for any questions people may have about how to being a host of a meeting. All right, Michael, thank you very much. Once again, we'll uh, do uh, we'll go through the same process. You're going to go ahead and state your name. I'll call upon you and you can ask your question. Please, everyone else, stay muted until the conversation is completed. And let's spend the next five minutes talking about or asking questions about uh, or comments about what Michael covered as being a host. So this I'll go ahead and have the mic open. I'm sorry, who's that? Herbie. All right, Herbie. So I don't know if, I, maybe I missed this. So did you discuss at all dealing with raised hands from the phone perspective? Uh, I did not, actually. That was one, one of the options. Yeah, we didn't talk about using the raised hand feature on there. And I'm trying to remember, did I have, I can't remember if I have that turned off or not on my main account. Okay. But, yeah, so and then Herbie, I, Herbie brings up a good point. Uh, you know, you can't have a feature to use the raise hands, which a lot of meetings like to use in lieu of muting, unmuting. Oh, okay. And then I also thought I'd mention that I've heard real quick, and I've not tried this for myself because I don't have one, but I've heard that if you want a Mac-like experience with hosting Zoom, if you do so on the iPad with a Bluetooth keyboard, they apparently have instituted the same uh, keyboard commands that they have on the Mac. I I can't confirm this. This is what I've heard from somebody else. But um, if that's true, then that also offers another um, more natural form of hosting for those that maybe can't don't have a computer but still want to the you know to have the keyboard type experience. So using a Bluetooth keyboard with the iPad. So I thought I'd mention that as well. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. I have to check that out too. Thank this you, is Jake. Jake. I have a question. Recently, so yeah. All right, Jacob. Uh, what's your question? I don't know if this is unrelated, but have you guys ever used Zoom phone? I, I didn't catch that part. Zoom with. Have you ever used their phone feature? The phone feature? Yeah. Uh, I think I've just as a participant, I've connected to some calls where I just use the, uh, like uh, Jim Turner had mentioned a while ago, when you first connect, it's either data using Wi-Fi or cellular or phone. Okay, yeah, that, because I know like in contact, you can select the contact, you can call somebody too, can't you? Besides schedule a meeting and stuff like that. This is Brad. Uh, go ahead, Brad. Zoom phone, uh, what Jake's talking about, it's a, it's a feature available to business customers and it sets up a feature similar to Google Voice where you oh. actually have a phone number. Um, I don't have any experience using it, but I have read about it and I know the NFB Texas affiliate has been talking about setting that up for their various chapters as an alternative to they have been using Google voice. I don't really know the advantages or disadvantages of it, but like I said, I just know I've heard of it. And that's what Jake, I believe is asking about. Okay. Great. You got to pay for it. It's this is, this is Sarah. Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Hi, actually I uh, work for a company and we use uh, the zoom uh, phone uh, feature uh, it is very accessible, and yes, you do get assigned 
uh, a business phone number. People can leave voice message. You can retrieve it. You can record your calls, convert them to transcripts, things of that nature. But yes, that's that's essentially the, the function of the Zoom phone feature for businesses. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone Chris? else? Oh, go ahead, Chris. So, Michael, I think it was under maybe security. There was that that option for unmuting people, un unmuting participants. So, are you are you saying that you can unmute people without their knowledge, or was that just a way to let people unmute themselves? Uh, that allowed the option, yeah, you know, to for unmute to be used, yeah. You know, so people could unmute themselves. So you couldn't automatically unmute people. Uh, well, someone, this is someone has told me that you can uh, unmute people now. There's a certain way to do that, and I forget how to do that. But maybe Herbie knows. No, right, I don't Herbie. Think, yeah, I don't think you can unmute people. What you can do though is, if you request for them to unmute, ask for them to unmute. <clears throat> what it will do is it'll send the user a prompt saying blah, 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 would like you to unmute. And this then you press Brad. the button. Go ahead, finish your thought, Herbie. This is, this is Brad. Uh, go ahead, Brad. Yeah, Terry Ann sent uh, uh, you, me, and Michael a document the other day about this feature because we had talked about it in a, uh, yeah. a meeting we had preparing for this. And she said that a group she is a participant in uses it. Um, the, the article she sent says, uh, beginning with, uh, God, I can't remember the Zoom, is it 5.2 version? Uh, there is a way to go into the website, say I have a Zoom, uh, one of the accounts that I pay for. I can go into the Zoom web portal, and just like there's a whole lot of settings that you can enable or disable for your account, uh, and one of the settings, and I can't remember the exact name of it because um, I've read that article and then saved it and set it aside, is to enable the feature to allow the host to automatically uh, unmute people. Now, when people join a meeting, I believe they are prompted and uh, they have to allow that feature. Uh, but under normal circumstances, like Kirby is saying, no, a, a host sends a uh, you know, ask all, ask to unmute. You can ask an individual or ask all to unmute. And then people have to accept, you know, yes, unmute or stay muted. But no, it's a feature that came about at back in September, I believe the article said is when this feature was, was uh, created or, or introduced, I guess is the right word. This is Chris. Terry. Oh, go ahead, Terry. Um. I, I am involved in the, a group that uses it. And I assure you, um, when I join their meeting, the first thing I have to do before I can do anything else is give permission for the host to unmute me. And if I didn't want him or her to do so, he, that person, the host would not be able to unmute me. So I have to give permission. But once I do that, and then I'm in the meeting, that uh, the host can indeed unmute me. So I don't have to try and figure out where the unmute button is. But I've given permission. So they can't do it without your knowledge. Hey. This is Gail. Uh, go ahead, Gail. Okay, I, I had a question because I don't know if this is with a new phone or 15, but I have had problems sometimes with uh, lately with unmuting. And I know that the Zoom, it says tap to speak. And so before it was always unmute in the left corner but uh, now it says um, tap to speak and then um, I tap it and then it's um, done. So, and today I was doing it, you know, and I was unmuted, um, but I was double tapping and wasn't muting me again. So anyway, can you tell me, uh, Sri, what I'm doing wrong? 
because so sometimes I've, I try to unmute and I'm, I can't. So typically what I do, um, I, you know, in, you, you have two ways of doing it. You do a touch and explore to the bottom left. I typically do a four finger single tap in the bottom left and then I just flick left. And I thought it said mute and unmute. I could be wrong because I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing today, but uh, I was just gonna check on my iPad to see what it said. Yeah, I thought it, it said my mute. audio on my iPad. So I assume that's what my this iPhone is saying. Brad, too. mine says yeah, mute ahead, and unmute. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm running iOS 15.2 and I do have the latest version, whatever Michael's saying the version number is. I checked mine and I got the latest version of the Zoom app on both of those two iPhones. Okay. This is Gail. Can I ask another question? I uh, sure. Covered, covered this, but I may have missed it. If, say, um, you have a Zoom event on a calendar and um, sometimes, uh, you know, maybe may on your like today screen for the calendar, which I always thought, you know, I now like with iBug, I can just um, double tap the link. It takes me right into it. But um, with a calendar, when I double tap the link, it doesn't always work. So how do you get in there um, to that link? If it's... If it's on your, you know, the link is already on your calendar. This is Brad. Oh, go ahead, Brad. Uh, on mine, if I've got a meeting set up, um, you know, I have my calendar, my iOS calendar, uh, I don't know, uh, on my iPhone. I don't really use it much on my iPad. I, I'm not sure if, which device you were talking about. Um, yeah, I'm talking I'll, about the iPhone. Okay, iPhone. I have mine set up, my calendar set up in a way so that um. I got the month set up in a usual, you know, calendar grid. And then whatever day I've got selected, I have the calendar events for that day are listed below. I select an event and I know I got a Zoom meeting. I select and double tap it and it opens up that event. At the top of the event then is where it's the title of the event and the the Zoom link. I believe I have always just double tapped on that whole big square up there and it joins the meeting. This Provided that I've got a valid link saved. I tend to put them for the location of the meeting instead of, you know, the address, you know, like if it's at a, you know, I'm going to a doctor's office, it's got the address of the doctor's office. If it's a Zoom meeting, I tend to put the, the Zoom, the URL, HTTPS, whatever, in that Zoom location. Now, sometimes people may put them farther down in the notes or things like that. You might have to swipe down farther to get to it, but I put mine right up top below the title for the meeting, and that's how I access them. Uh, this is Shreet. Uh, so in the example today, when Michael sent us the meeting in the calendar, I did basically what Brad just described. I went to the calendar and I swiped right till I got to today's event. And then, you know, it brought up today's um, calendar, you know, starting from 12 a.m. And I just swiped right till I got to his uh, meeting request that he gave me. And then I double tapped on it. It opened up and the HTTPS link was on the top. And I just... Uh, Swipe right till I heard the HTTPS link and I double tapped and it took me to the Zoom meeting. This is Sonia. Yes, Sonia. I be, I'm just letting you know that Chris had a question. I, oh, okay. I, hey, I, Chris. Okay. Sorry. Oh, are, are y'all done with this one? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, oh, what was it? Um, uh, two quick things. So, Michael, when you were talking about creating your Zoom link, it sounded like, it sounded like the password was optional. I know in the past, it, they didn't have passwords and they, they were mandatory passwords. Are they back to, can you, can you create a Zoom link without a password now? Uh, was, was that an option for you? And also secondly, can you go over re recordings, the paid versus non-paid versions of Zoom and who can record and how does that work? Thanks. Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you have two options on setting up the meeting. You can have the waiting room and you don't, and then that does not require a password. You can have a password even with a waiting room, or you can have a password 
only meeting, not use the waiting room. So those are two options you could do. Uh, I think with the free version, you're not able to record. I, I've never found a record button uh, when I've been in that meeting. This is Terry. Go ahead, Terry. Go ahead. I have a free version and I have uh, recorded. Oh, okay. Because I was just looking for it here for this demo and I could not find it. So I guess I was looking in the wrong place. This is Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Can you only, uh, Chris. <laughs> I think, I think Brad, that's going to answer this. Can you only record it on the phone or did you have to be on a Mac or PC? Um, this is Brad on, on ahead, Brad. iPhone. I mean, I have a paid account, so I really don't know what it does. If you uh, are using the free account, um, you can record, but on the iPhone, you can only record to the cloud. There is not an option to record locally like there is when you're on a Mac or PC. I imagine an I, iPad would be the same because it's an iOS device, even though they call it iPad OS. This is Shree. Yes, uh, Brad's right. If you go to the more option and you swipe right, you do have, it says record to iCloud and double tap and you can start the record and double tap to stop recording. This is Terry. Oh, go ahead, Terry. Just to add to that, if you do a recording like that, then when you want uh, to have people be able to listen to that recording, um, there's a, they have to get a passcode, at least when in my experiences, you've had to have a passcode that allows you to listen to that recording that's in the cloud. This is Brad. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. Yeah, to specify, I think if, if I heard correctly, Shri said, I, record to iCloud. It's not to iCloud. I'm, I'm, it is, it's the Zoom. Oh, it, they call I, it record I, to cloud, but it's the Zoom server. Zoom. And yes. like Terry was saying, when you're done with that, when you're done recording, you can either stop recording during a meeting, but once you end the meeting, the recording is processed and the host of that meeting or the account owner of that meeting is sent an email. And like there's, there's a couple of links in there. There's one for the host to access it. Um, and I believe there's also one that you can share a link with someone. And I'm, I'm not sure about a passcode with that link. Terry may have more experience with that than I do because I've only done them as the account owner. And um, I believe they download to your downloads folder if you select the link. But again, I don't have a lot of experience with that. That'll well, have to be the last comment. Yeah, so let me just, um, before we... Uh, Continue. I, I do want to announce the winner um, for today's question of how many total minutes that we've uh, used on the iBug Cafe in 2021. Michael? Yeah, Michael. I was just going to mention to you, uh, I did a quick calculation. The uh, 3.6 trillion minutes you said they used last year, I uh, converted that into years, and it's over 7 million years. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I heard trillion, it just made me think about, uh, you know, when I worked, we were, our minutes were in millions. It was never even billions. And I'm hearing trillions. So. This is Sonia. Yes, I do. No wonder we're all tired of Zoom, right? But we're just happy everybody's here. <laughs> so. Okay, well, tell, well, us, think, tell us, tell us, tell uh, us. Well, you know, I just want to just say, you know, this kind of tells you about you know, what Eric's thought was when he went and created Zoom because everybody told him this was gonna fail. And he had a vision of, you know, there's a way to do a conference call and he was gonna compete with all the others. So um, we do have one winner. The, the correct answer is 1,478 minutes. And uh, Linda Swanson got it correct. Right, Sandia? Did I get that yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. She, her and guess so was. Is Linda here on the call? Yes, she be is. On the call. She's still here. Come on, Linda. I yes. am here. Yay. So, Linda, we're going to send, Yay. I'm going to send you a gift card. Uh, I, I guess we could probably just email you the code so you can get the $20 Uber. Uh, you can use it for your Uber ride or you can use it for Uber Eats. Wow. Awesome. Thank you very much. I could do some quick math there in my head. <laughs> All right, where'd it go, Linda? <laughs> <laughs>
Congratulations. Uh, I do also want to say thank you to my presenters, um, Terry Ann, Brad, and Michael. Obviously, we couldn't have done this without you guys. And I, uh, I also want to thank uh, Sandia and Michael because they've been very supportive and uh, not only for uh, what we're doing here, but uh, for what they're doing for all of us. So I, I do want to give a shout out to them too. Shree, you put all this together and we are totally grateful because as you can see, there is obviously a lot to learn about Zoom, even after using that for like so, you know, so many years now, but uh, thank you, Shree. Okay, and, and then before we go, uh, so do we, any, any final comments we needed? Now oh, just uh, real quick, like we said, we'll be back on the buzz tomorrow for the you can go have questions about your iPhone and so forth is on Zoom right here at 7 p.m. Central. Then we'll have Clubhouse on Tuesday. We'll have uh, what else are we going to have this week? And then we have the movie on Friday. And then, like I said, the next show and tell will be on uh, January 22nd. So that's what we got. Oh, the book club. The book club is coming. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Thursday. Bye. Thursday. Thursday. I think that's it. I think that's it. Commonwealth. Okay. Good night. Commonwealth. Thank you. I thank everyone. All all right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Stay well and be safe. Happy New Year.